Today I'm working on a Coleman pop-up camper and what we're going to do to it today is we're going to do some rat proofing. If you own a pop-up camper one of the common problems that you can have with them is the intrusion of rats getting into the camper when it's sitting and not being used for an extended period of time. We've had some experiences on two of our pop-up campers you know having mice get inside them and do some pretty extensive damage. The first one we had the mice got into it and we didn't even know until we backed it into you know a campsite at a state park and we raised the top and you could begin to smell the smell and see all the droppings scattered around the floor. There was a hole the size of a basketball right in the middle of the roof of the slide out. So this is a issue that you can have extremely major damage to your pop-up camper and you need to address. Some people talk about how they like to use Irish Spring soap to, you know, put inside the camper to deter, you know, mice and rats. And that's nice, but yet if you're counting on that, then basically what you're counting on is the rats getting inside your camper first, then to find the Irish Spring soap. And the same with, you know, rat poison or something like that, you're basically counting on the mice and rats getting inside your camper again, you know, to find the poison. So the idea of what we want to do is we want to go over this whole camper and find all of the cracks and crevices and, you know, do whatever we can do to seal it up, you know, so that mice can't get into it. So, so in this video, I'm going to show you a lot of places of where you might find, you know, places where mice can squeeze through and what you can do to, you know, seal them up and, you know, make it so that, you know, you won't have this issue. So let's go and get started and we'll take a look probably want to use a combination of several different products to seal up your pop-up camper uh, all of which of these are available from Home Depot or Lowe's. Now the first item I have here is some fiberglass resin and the way this product works is you'll pour it into a container and there's some hardener that comes with it you mix the hardener with it and then it will dry it's rock solid within about 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, you would want to use that in combination with some fiberglass cloth. You'll use your scissors to cut out pieces into the shape of what you need to seal up. And then you would also need a, paint, a disposable paintbrush you know, to dip into the resin that you mixed up and then you would paint it onto the fiberglass mat and the fiberglass mat then actually becomes transparent. To do this you probably want to use some disposable latex gloves because this is a little bit hard to clean up and the only thing that will clean it up is acetone. You know, the other product I have here is some half inch wire mesh and you can use your tin snips to cut this and mold it into different shapes, you know, that will be able to be screwed into the bottom of your camper in corners and things like that. And you may want to use that also in combination with the spray foam product. You know, the spray foam product, actually the rats can chew it, but if it has the wire mesh in the middle of the spray foam, when they start chewing it, they'll run into the wire mesh and they can't get any further than that. Sometimes spraying underneath with a spray foam can is a little difficult because when the can is upright, it only blows out air, so the can has to be inverted upside down to actually have the spray foam come out. So for this reason, a lot of times what I do is I'll take a clear piece of plastic tubing and it inserts right over the end of the spray nozzle on the spray foam. And that way you can take the end of your tube and shove it up into hard to reach areas while still keeping your can inverted upside down. So anyways, let's get started on our repair and I'll show you how to use these products. Okay, before we finish this repair, I need about 60 seconds of your time to check to see if you need any eternal repair. You probably think to yourself, eternal repair, what's that? Well, let me pose a question to you. Are you a good person? And I'm sure many of you out there watching this video right now, you're probably really nice folks, okay? Let's put the same question against God's standard, the Ten Commandments, okay? One of the commandments says, thou shalt not lie. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself at some point in your life, You've told at least one small lie before. We all have, I have too, okay? Another one of his commandments says, thou shalt not steal. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself again, at some point in your life, even no matter how small it was, you've probably stolen some small item, okay? Those rules define what sin is, okay? And if you broke even one of those rules, such as lying and stealing, that means you've sinned. We all have, okay? There isn't anybody that hasn't. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The punishment for sin is going to hell or eternal separation from God. But the good news is that Jesus Christ came, he took a brutal beating on the cross. He was sacrificed on the cross, went to the grave. Three days later, he arose and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross is he was taking the punishment for my sin and for your sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith, you believe in who he was and what he did 
and you repent, okay? For the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Many of you are probably thinking, hey, I'm a good person. I've done so many nice things in my life for people. Surely God wouldn't look on me unfavorably. But the Bible actually says that by grace, you've been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The only way to be reconciled for eternity with Jesus Christ in heaven is through putting your faith and trust in what he did personally for you on the cross, taking your punishment. Okay, now let's get back to our repair. And I'll have some more information on it for you on that at the end of the video. But basically the idea behind this is you wanna crawl around on your back underneath these things and look for every little crack and crevice, whether it's spray foam, fiberglass, wire mesh, whatever it is, and make sure everything is 100% sealed. Even the smallest of cracks, if a mouse can get his front teeth on it, he's gonna chew and chew and chew right through the hole there. So first thing I suggest you do is go around the perimeter of the edge where the fiberglass comes down. And you can see right here, we've used some spray foam. It was probably about a half inch little gap there. Here's a factory gap that I can stick my finger through. And on this one, I'm just gonna screw a piece of metal right over the top of it. Here's an example of a self-tapping screw. It actually has a drill bit on the end of it. And when you screw it in with your drill gun, it'll actually drill right through the metal and then start threading on the threads of the screw. Here's what it looks like after I screwed two of the self-tapping metal screws right into the frame of the trailer. Likewise, right here, I need to come back and put some spray foam on that one to make sure that mice don't get in. Sometimes when you crawl up and you start looking around under these things, you'll find places even where the maybe the corner of the floor, these things have particle board floors, and the corner of your floor might even have gotten a little bit soft. And so on this spot here, we actually had a place where you, know, you could get right through, you know, and I did a couple different techniques on this one. Um, this here is fiberglass. And so what I did was I put some fiberglass mat because this particle board was starting to get a little bit soft. And on the other side of this metal rib too, right here, it was likewise getting a little bit soft. In this spot right here, we actually had some of the particle board flooring. It had gotten a little bit soft and there was a hole right here in the corner. And so actually what I did on this one is I put some fiberglass mat down and went ahead and mixed up my gel coat and or my, went ahead and mixed up my resin and then painted it onto the fiberglass mat and fiberglassed it kind of to the frame and to the floor right here. Another common spot that you can have rat intrusion is where the pipes come through the floor into the kitchen area. And so on this one, what we've done is we had some gaps around the hole that had been cut for the pipes and we went ahead and used the spray foam and shot it up inside there. Sometimes what I like to do also is I'll put some wire mesh down first and then I'll come back and shoot it with spray foam so that that way if any mice or something start chewing on the spray foam, then they'll actually chew into the wire and that's as far as they'll be able to get. And so right here, you know, at one point in time our camper got backed into something and it cracked the fiberglass plastic back panel and there was actually a hole, you know, right here. So we came back and we mixed up some fiberglass and, and sealed it all back up. This one right here, the perimeter of it, there was like a half inch gap in your tire wells. But when you look up inside here, it's amazing what you'll find. For on this camper, it's actually a crack in the plastic up in the top of the, of the ceiling of the tire well. And mice were actually getting into this one, you know, through that crack. And so these campers are not built with the most heavy duty materials. And so, Anyways, we came back and we fiberglassed the whole ceiling of this tire well, you know, to be able to seal it all up. And particularly also where the tire well, the plastic meets the edges of the wood and all that, you can also fiberglass and seal all that up. This is part of the slide out right here, but here's a half inch gap right there that, you know, a mouse could start chewing on that plastic and make its way on into there. On our last camper, which was built a little bit different than this one, the front tongue beam that came right down through the middle actually went through the front of the fiberglass of the camper and there was a gap right around the front uh, the front channel beam that a mouse went right through near this area here and got to the inside of the camper and that's when we had the biggest amount of damage even on the exposed outsides here's a one inch gap where the rubber comes across and meets it was just a little too short and so we attached a little piece of wire there so it kind of made a block. Okay, here's another spot that 
this is where the cranker goes through the back wall of the trailer. You can notice there's a half inch gap right here where the shaft goes through. And I've installed a piece of you know wire mesh and clipped a hole right through the middle so that it keeps anything from getting in there and chew it on this edge. This is the door for where the electric cord comes out. And I'm actually missing a little piece of plastic here. And so what I did was I put a piece of wire mesh down there. I've also spent some time studying the air conditioner and how it attaches to the ceiling of the camper. And for my model, I can't see where there's any gaps, you know, that mice would be able to get through or chew through or anything like that. But I'd still suggest if you have a rooftop air conditioner, at least to look around the perimeter of the edges and everything and both inside and outside and see if you determine anything that could be a potential hazard for mice intrusion. Hey, I hope this video has helped you on the repair that you're working on right now. As far as the eternal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure who God is and if he really exists, I encourage you to pray like this. Say, God, if you are real, if you are out there, I pray that you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that kind of prayer, he's going to answer you and he's going to show you exactly who he is. And at that point, you will know he's real. At the point in time you know he's real and you're ready to accept what Christ has done for you and know that you have eternal salvation with him in heaven, the gospel is so simple. You just pray like this. You say, Lord, I acknowledge that I've sinned and I've fallen short of your glory. I know that you have paid a price for my personal sin on the cross. I know you are the son of God and that you were resurrected and taken my place on that cross. And I thank you for saving me in Jesus name. That's how simple it is. But here's the catch. Just saying those words doesn't do a thing for you unless the heart believes the words you're saying. For the gospel says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe God raised him from the dead, the believing part is where salvation is. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. So anyways, I appreciate you watching. If you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com. That's eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot of other interesting repair ideas and also some more information on your walk with Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. God bless and have a good day.